Good morning, accelerators. Happy uh, Wednesday to you. We don't have too many questions today, but I will uh, just get through them. Interesting enough, I'm supposed to be the marketing guy, but I don't think any of these are specifically marketing related, but still happy to help. Um, so we'll get right into it. First question is from Ricardo. Ricardo asks, how does a business analyze with a start improving and scaling? In simpler terms, how does a $100,000 business differ from a million dollar business? What mindset and traits are involved? Background is, I operate a barber shop and I'm a barber as well. How can I start analyzing where to start making more revenue and take action right away? So I think the, the big question there in terms of scaling from my perspective is processes, systems. You know, figure out uh, what you're doing, how to do it, document how to do it, um, so you can then start delegating and training others to do it. Um, in your particular case, um, you know, you want to figure out what generates revenue, uh, ultimately, and do more of it. So um, as a barbershop, I have to believe, you know, your main source of revenue is actually cutting hair. And then some, you know, other areas of revenue are like product sales. Um, so what you need to do, uh, would be hire more barbers or bring in more barbers that can generate more revenue because that's a scalable part of, uh, the revenue generating of your business. And that's what you want to get more and more of, um, you know, and then obviously if you can do upsells and cross sells in that revenue stream as well, um, you want to go further and further down that path. Um, I know it's kind of a quick, simple answer, but I think at the end of the day, to if you if you're only worried about the top line revenue, you need to figure out better ways to make more of it. In which case, there's only so many used to go around, so you need to bring other barbers in that generate revenue. Hope that helps. Uh, next question is from Yolind, Yolindi. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And uh, they ask, "What are creative ways on a limited budget to hire and compensate a salesperson, and where would you recommend finding that person?" Business description and background. I need to employ a salesperson. What is the best way to pay them? Commission only, hourly with smaller commissions, or simply hourly with no commissions? If commission-based, then what percentage is acceptable or standard? We are a pillow manufacturer making decorative pillows and manufacturing pillow inserts. Uh, the elevator pitches were a mother and daughter team that designed and create decorative throw pillows for home and business branding. Okay, so there's kind of a lot there about the salesperson question. Um, at the end of the day, um, the creative way is I think you need to go further down a high incentive type of uh, methodology. So in this case, some version of commission, whether it's, you know, per unit or percentage of dollars, um, you know, every industry can differ. But if uh, if your salesperson can't make enough money selling, then you need to <laughs> you need to change your commission structure in such a way that they can. So I, I think what I would do is try to backwards generate from your perspective um, you know, a reasonably successful person in this space would make, you know, $60,000 a year, whatever you think that would be a good, good uh, number. And then backwards drive um, how many pillows sales you're looking to generate for that uh, $60,000. And then, you know, divide that out in a per unit or per percentage basis in order to come up with what you think is a fair compensation structure. Um, what I might say, since you're looking for creative ways, um, I'd look further down a concept of maybe, um, what we, uh, what some people call like rep firms, but um, people that rep more than one product. So uh, what would be complimentary items? Uh, you don't tell me exactly here who you call on, but if I assumed you were calling on, let's say furniture stores and you want them to carry your pillows in them, then maybe find a salesperson uh, or company that also sells into furniture stores and get them to represent your product as well. So now while they're they're talking about coffee tables, they can also talk about your throw pillows um, or, you know, whatever, whatever that might be, if it's not furniture stores, um, but whoever that target market is, there's probably other people in complementary industries also selling to them and see if you can leverage that because now they can be more productive representing multiple products with their time and get you into more locations for probably less cost than just hiring somebody direct. Hope that helps. Uh, next question is Cliff. Cliff says, when looking to get on social media and start creating content, should I be focused on my personal profile or my company's profile? The background here is I'm starting on Instagram first and I know I need to be the face of my company, but I'm struggling with what profile I should focus on. Personal profile talking about my business 
on my business page featuring me as the brand. So Cliff, without any background uh, of your business, I guess my first question is it depends on what your business is um, and you know who you're trying to focus and why you're trying to get on social media and you know what you're trying to promote. That said, without knowing it, I would say in general, people resonate and identify with people. So I think I would probably start by building your own personal brand um, about the business versus the business brand to talk about you um, because people do resonate with people and make yourself the expert there um, and build that first. Um, but again, depending on the business, which it doesn't say here, um, there might be some um, some reasons not to do it that way, but I think I'd focus that way um, from the general question. And lastly, we have David. David says, do you think 35 years old is too late to transition careers? David says, I'm a mortgage loan originator, and due to rising rates, it's been difficult to close three-plus loans a month. I've decided to pick up trade skills. I'm looking at construction, electrician, or commercial plumbing. Being that I'm 35 years old, not sure that I'm getting too late into a new trade. I've inquired about job openings in the trades, and I want a minimum of one year or more experience. I'm willing to take a pay cut to become an apprentice. What are your thoughts? It says, I've been doing mortgages for the last four years and have been in sales for six years in Arkansas. Currently seeking a career change due to the current real estate market. So I first want to say, David, I don't think it's ever too late to change careers. Um, and I think if you want to get into the trades and that's of interest to you, I would reach out to owners of, um, of businesses uh, that are in the trades of what interests you and, and, and you know come directly to them and say, look, I don't know anything, but I want to learn. I want, I'm willing to be an apprentice. Um, help me. I think there's still a lot of demand in those uh, areas, and I think you'll find somebody um, to take that on if, if, if that's what you want. Um, I might also suggest, um, since you did mention you have been sales for six years, obviously, if you're interested in the trades, um, there's obviously, you know, selling that needs to happen in the trade areas as well, whether it's for construction or electrician or commercial plumbing, maybe try to leverage that and say, hey, look, I want to learn to become a salesperson for you down these trades. I've never sold this specifically. I don't know how to price it, but you know, I want to learn how to open these doors and maybe you can apprentice down the sales aspect as well, which uh, might go a little bit more with your professional background, um, you know, working in a mortgage business and sales than, you know, you know, necessarily swinging a hammer. But if you want to swing a hammer, 35 is not too late at all. Go swing a hammer. And that, like I said, was not terribly marketing focused this time, but that's all we got here, guys. So I'm assuming you had... Uh, a nice uh, Thanksgiving holiday and are not necessarily <laughs> focusing on uh, accelerating as much, but uh, keep up the good work, keep the questions coming and uh, have a good uh, Christmas, Merry Christmas and happy new year. And I'll talk to you after then.